From the outside looking in is our topic on our next episode of Spirit and Life. Stay tuned. Life Christian Television invites you to join us now for Spirit and Life with Pastor Charlie Alvarado. Hello and welcome to Spirit and Life. I'm your host, Charlie Alvarado, and I'm the pastor of One for Life Ministries in El Paso, Texas. And I'm happy to be with you today as our topic is from the outside looking in. That's right. We must maintain a divine perspective, a heavenly perspective of our role in this world. We're only here for a short time. We have work to do, and that work is to draw people to God. Let us remember, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul calls us ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we are His representatives here in this world, and that we have a divine responsibility to bring people to God, to help people by the way we're living, to draw them close to God and help them to become believers. Remember, Jesus prayed, He, he said that, that the fields are white unto harvest, but the laborers are few. Well, we can't forget that we are laborers. He said, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into the fields to gather His harvest. That's your role. That's my role uh, to help other people come to God simply by loving them. Let us never forget what Jesus said. He said, you are the light of the world. And he told us to go and let our light shine so that men can see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. So we have to represent every day. As long as God gives us breath and life, we have to live for the Lord. That's our responsibility. We're only here for a short time. Well, before I continue, I want to give a big thank you to our church family, One for Life Ministries, uh, for underwriting this program. And I invite you to join us uh, if you're looking for a home, a place where you can simply be yourself and be part of a loving, united family where we hear the Word of God and we, we do our best to live by the Word of God, to serve one another, to, to, to help each other in this walk. And that is our role and responsibility, to remember that we are the body of Christ and members individually, and that we all must be uh, 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 joints that supply and so I'm, I'm inviting you to come and join us. We're located at 131 McClintock on the west side of El Paso. And uh, if you want to call us for more information, call us at 915-920-8301. We have ministry for children of all ages. We have marriage ministry. Uh, we can offer pastoral counseling if you need it. We have a food pantry if you know somebody that could use some help. But we truly hope that you'll come and see and give us a chance to show you what God is doing in our midst. All right, well, let's continue with our teaching. This is the third part of, of this particular subject. And, and we, I've been teaching our church family on this at the same time. I just feel that it's very important for us to, to really see things the way God sees them and, and never forget what our role is while we're in this world. And, and so I've been sharing many scriptures. If you want to go back the last couple of weeks, you can find our videos there on YouTube. Go to kscetv.com and you can see where our, our look for spirit and life and see the different programs that we have to offer if you want to get caught up. But uh, I've got some great, great notes. If you want copies of my notes, uh, uh, send us your email address or text 915-920-8301. And uh, if you want copies of these notes, I'll be happy to send them to you. Just give us your email email address. All right, well, I want to start here in 1 Peter chapter 2, and, and these are verses that I've shared in the past, but uh, they're my foundation verses for this particular subject of from the outside looking in. And uh, he says, Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls and be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then, even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior 
and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. Remember, let your light shine so that men can see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Every day, God's people must be doing good. Jesus said, only God is good. So when th good things are happening through us and to us, we have to give God all the glory. Every good thing that we do is God working in us. And so let's let God do what God wants to do through all of us. Remember, we are His workmanship or His masterpiece, and He's working in us so that we will want what He wants and do what He wants us to do. That's His role. And ultimately, the plan is that we all be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. He's the potter, we're the clay. So He's molding us and shaping us into the person He wants us to be. And of course, He wants us all to be just like Jesus Christ. So we've got to let Jesus live in us. But here, Peter's reminding us that we are temporary residents and foreigners. We are not from this world. And so our work as people from heaven, from where we are born, we were born, if you were born again, if you're a child of God, then you were born from God and you from who is in heaven. And the spirit that now lives in us is the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we are his ambassadors. Jesus left the earth. He went, he ascended into heaven. But he handed us the, the responsibility of carrying on his ministry, which is to save souls and draw people to God, get them into the kingdom of God. It is, Jesus said, it is my father's good pleasure to give you his kingdom. Then he says, my little flock, the Lord loves us and he wants us to have everything he has. Now that's kindness. That's generosity. That is love. God wants us to have everything. He's not stingy with, with his possessions. He wants to share it all. Remember, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I can never forget that, and I can't stop talking about that. I'm, I, I, I'm happy every time I remember that, and, and I'm happy to share it and remind God's people that we have a huge inheritance coming to us, the kingdom of heaven and, and the new earth. So there's so much to, to live for and, and be mindful of and not get caught up in the cares of this world. And that's not an easy thing or it's, it's easy to go there. And so that's part of the fight of faith that we're in is to stay in faith, keep trusting God, keep looking to God for everything, trust the Lord to provide for us for every single day, not just to let go of the past and not worry about the future, but stay in the moment so then God can do what he wants to do with us now. Praise the Lord, he's with us right now. So he writes on uh, about respecting people in authority here. Second, second Peter, I mean, first Peter two. this will be verse 13. He says, for the Lord's sake, submit to all human authority, whether the king as head of state or the officials he has appointed. For the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. It is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. For you are free, yet you are God's slaves. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Respect everyone and love the family of believers. Fear God and respect the king. So we, as citizens of heaven, must be good ambassadors of heaven. We must be model citizens from heaven and also model citizens while we're here in the earth, uh, being uh, law-abiding citizens and respecting those who are in authority. That's our role. And it's important that we remember we're not from here. So if we remember that we're not from here and we're from heaven and it's what God wants us to do, then we, we should be able to pray for whoever is in, in positions of power around us. Now, we in the United States do not have a king. We have a president. We have the people that, that, that he has appointed. We have uh, police officials, military officials, people who have power, people who have authority, people that make decisions that affect our lives. So the Lord instructs us to pray for them not to control them, not to judge them, not to condemn them. Remember, Jesus said in John 3, 17, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We can't forget this. God wants to save the world 
whether, whether we like them or not, it, God loves them. And God loves everyone we see and everyone we know. So we, we've got to do our best to represent the kingdom of God first. And then let God live in us and through us. Let's fulfill our role as temporary citizens here on the planet. But remember, we're not staying here. Jesus is coming back to get us so that we can be where he is. John, uh, uh, 1 John chapter 14, he, he said, In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And I'm coming back to get you so that you can be where I am. Then he reminds us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. So, God, while we're here, we must live honorable lives. All right? Be blameless, so to speak. You know, eliminate every possible excuse uh, for people to judge us or condemn us. Yeah, if, if a person wants to judge and condemn, they're, they're going to find things because we're, we're all works in progress. Everybody, everybody has their faults. Everybody has their weaknesses. So if people insist on finding something wrong with us, they're going to find stuff because we're not finished products yet. But, you know, I say, let's make it hard for them by, by doing good, by being a blessing, by loving and being generous and kind and gentle and truly representing the kingdom of God. Remember, we have to win souls. We can't force people to believe in God. We can win them to Christ by being like Christ, lovable, approachable, gentle, kind, not judgmental, not critical, and definitely not self-righteous, thinking that we're better than anybody. Remember, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So we're living in very dangerous times right now, evil times. Uh, uh, we live in a very divided country. If you live in the United States, it's divided. And, and you know, we have people on both sides and they on two sides and they're fighting against each other. And it's like spirit and flesh, you know. Uh, you know, one's going to have to take control of the other. But what really has to happen, not, not politically, but people have to come together if we want to live in peace. And that should be our prayer, that people do come together and they live together in unity and harmony. That is the will of God, that there be peace. And, and so that's our role. And we got to pray that, that God puts the right people in, in power so that, uh, so that we can live in peace, okay? But as far as we're concerned, no matter who's in charge, our role is to pray for them and to respect them. So we I have not been given the freedom to be disrespectful of anybody, all right? And then Romans chapter 12, uh, you know, Paul pleads with us in verses 1 through 5. I'm not going to read them all, but he's begging us to, uh, to offer our bodies to God as living sacrifices. And, and he says uh, here in the New Living Translation, he says, let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. So we are instructed by the word of God to give ourselves to God. He says, this is truly the way to worship him, or this is our reasonable service, as I first learned it in the King James, New King James, you know, but this is truly how we worship him, by giving ourselves to him. That's our responsibility. No one can make you worship God. That's your choice. It's my choice. None of us can make anybody worship God, but we can inspire them by living for God and, and letting them see us living in peace. We may not have what everybody else has, but it's not a competition either. What we must have is righteousness, peace, and joy. We must produce every day the fruit of the Spirit, which is love and joy and peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, kindness, and self-control. This is the fruit of the Spirit, and this is what makes you and me attractive in this world. That's what makes us approachable, and that's what's going to give people at least the, the, the willingness to hear what we have to say if they will see our gentleness. Just like Paul wrote to the Philippians, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. So let your gentleness be known, not your rudeness, not your forcefulness. That does not glorify the Lord. He wasn't that way. He came gentle and humble. And that's our role. 
He's going to come back uh, like a, uh, a ferocious lion. He's going to come back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. You know, no one's going to mess with him. And, and so, you know, he, he came in as a, as a humble sheep and lamb, the lamb of God who takes away our sins. But he's going to come back as the king of kings and the Lord of lords and with fire in his eyes. So, you know, we'll see the other side of Christ. But right now we, we've got to be like him if we want to win souls in this world. And that is our role. So let's go to Romans 14 um, and uh here Paul writes in verse, I'll read verses 8 through 13. He says, If we live, it's to honor the Lord. And if we die, it's to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Christ died and rose again for this very purpose, to be, both Lord, to be Lord both of the living and of the dead. So if we're going to live, then let us remember we live for the Lord. We live to honor honor the Lord. And if we die, well, it's also to honor the Lord. Whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. So right now, let us, let us accept that truth that I belong to God. I'm His. I'm His workmanship. I'm here to represent Him in this world. So if I'm going to live, I'm going to let Christ live in me. And if I die, well, it's for the glory of God. And, and it's important that, that we make a difference while we're here because remember, we are temporary residents. We are foreigners in this world. Um, he says, verse 10, remember, we're, we're thinking about our honorable behavior. This is what is required of you and me as children of God. We have to stop acting worldly. There, back in Romans 12, he says, don't be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't take on the nature, the customs, or the characteristics of this world. So stop being worldly and start being godly is the will of God for us. Remember, we're not from here. We're here from heaven and we're trying to, you know, where, wherever you are, the kingdom of heaven is. And, and, and God is touching the earth wherever you're standing. And, and so we are his representatives, his ambassadors, and, and hopefully by the way we're living, by the way we talk, uh, by the way we give, you know, others may humble themselves and come to God. But it's important that people give glory to God when they see the things that we do. So he, in verse 10, he says, why do you condemn another believer? Why do you look down on another believer? Remember, we will all stand before the judgment seat of God for the scriptures say, as, I sure, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bend to me and every tongue will declare allegiance to God. Yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. So let's stop condemning each other. Decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble. Well, if we follow the examples of this world, we're going to see people condemning one another. We'll see people judging and criticizing each other. We'll see, if we just, just watch the news, you'll see people uh, finding fault with, with one another. And, and so all that does is, is promote more division and, and it separates people. Remember, Jesus said a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Well, remember, we're from the kingdom of heaven. And we, you and me, brothers and sisters in the Lord, have to stay together. And the one who unites us is the Holy Spirit. And it is the will of God that we walk in love towards each other and not let the things of the world corrupt our hearts and minds. We don't want what's in the world to get into our hearts. We're from heaven. So our role as citizens of heaven, children of God, is to guard our hearts. We're here to bring love. We're here to bring peace. The peacemakers, right? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. That's our role. We, we cannot be divisive and represent Christ. That, is, that does not represent the Lord. He's, trying, he's praying that we be one. In John chapter 17, that we be united, that we have with each other what He and the Father have. 
Well, the Father and Son, uh, the Son always honors the Father, the Father always honors the Son, and they are inseparable. Nothing comes between them. And we have to have that same mutual respect for one another as believers. We may not see everything eye to eye. And, and it's going to take the Holy Spirit to help us to be in agreement. But it's important that we agree with the Word of God, with what we do know, and, and find the common ground. And just like the Scripture says, as much as it lies within you, live at peace with all men. So we are going to give an account to God for how we live in this world. So now that we understand this, let's do things the way God wants us to do them. Let's make sure that we're loving one another as children of God. If, if we call God our Father and Jesus our Lord, then He is, uh, then we are His children. And as His children, you know, we must love one another and serve one another and, and do our best by the way we're living to help other people come to God. We must model the most excellent behavior while we're here and it will be the Holy Spirit who will help us to live this way. Jesus didn't come to condemn, and we should not be condemning each other or even the world. We should be trying to save the world by the way we're living. He says, yes, each of you will get... Whoops, I, I messed up here. Let me find it again. Um, okay, help me, Father. Yes, this is uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 12. Yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. So let's stop condemning each other. That's Romans 14, uh, 13. Let's stop condemning each other. Decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall. Well, there are others watching us. You may be new in the things of the Lord. And it's important that those, those who you see uh, that have been walking with God longer than you, they should set a good example before you. Uh, you know, we as, as leaders, you know, if we're, we're going to, to baptize people, then, you know, Jesus said, make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so anybody who baptizes must be a disciple. And a disciple is a follower of Christ. He's an imitator of the Lord. He's one who adheres to or keeps the commandments of the Lord. And he's also a learner, a student, a pupil, one who's always learning the word of God. And, and we must be good examples to others, especially to the younger ones in the faith. So if we're going to baptize people, then we have a responsibility to live godly lives before them, give them something that they can imitate, just like the word says, to imitate those who, who through faith and patience have obtained the promises. So we have no business condemning any believer and, and we have no business really criticizing and judging the world. That's, you know, God already judged the world. He's trying to save the world or he wants to save the world. And he wants to use you and me to help people be saved. James chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 12. Uh, here he writes, what is causing the, the, the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You're jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you do ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what, what will give you pleasure. So let's go back to what starts the quarrels and the fights. It says it comes from the evil desires at war within. Carnal desires. Uh, you know, that's what starts the, the fights and the quarrels. It's, it's the flesh. People in the spirit are peacemakers. We're not here to insist on our own way. Love does not insist on its own way. It's not selfish. It's not self-centered. 
Love is patient. Love is kind. And, and that is Christ. And, and, and that is our work is to be like Christ and, and to let love work in us and through us. So, you know, this is carnality. This is not being spiritual. This is not being godly when people are quarreling and fighting. They, those That's from the flesh, the evil desires at war within you. Uh, and, and he says, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You're jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. And then we see that happening in this world. Uh, you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it, and when you do ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You have not because you ask not, and you receive not because you ask amiss, is the way I first learned this. So if we're if our motives, if our if our prayers are all to 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 satisfy our own personal pleasures or desires, then, then we're not going to get, God's not going to answer that prayer. He's going to answer the prayer that, that is prayed according to His will. God, if, if you want healing, well, God wants you to be healed, so pray for those things. If you, if you trust God to provide for you, then that's a good thing. Lord, I need X, Y, Z, and then you ask for those things in the name of Jesus. And Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it will be done for you. Well, if the word is working in us, then we're going to ask for the things that we know God wants us to have and he's ready to give us those things. We are his responsibility. He's looking out for us and it's his role to make sure that we have everything that we need. And so in verse four, I mean, this is pretty blunt. He says, you adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Don't you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate, that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. And he gives grace generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Well, the Lord is, is a jealous God and he doesn't want to share us with the world or to want us to share our, our affections with the world. He wants us to give him all our affection and to live only for him, not to live for the world. And we have everything if we have God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We have it all. And we lack nothing if we put all of our trust in the Lord. That's what God wants. God wants your whole heart. And he doesn't want to share you with the things of this world. This world will be destroyed one day. Everything you see around you will one day be destroyed with the world. People will die if they, and, and eternally and go into the lake of fire, a place that was reserved for the devil and his demons, not for people. God wants all people to be saved. And it's our responsibility to help people come to the Lord. So I hope this helped you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue on this subject. It's a very important subject uh, for this day for all believers to remember their role. We can't forget, my brother and sister, we are not from here. We are children of God and heaven is our home forever. We're only here for a short time. So let's make a difference. Be a blessing to everybody you can. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen.